Okay, this is my question to you. Is the game simple or not? Yeah. Hold for it. We're all going simple. I'm easy. Well, it's as simple as you make it, is it not? Can we make it up? We can make it simple. I think it's the base platform is simple, and then what you do off your base is what you work out from that. So, you know, it's all tackle, play the ball, find speed, all that stuff's pretty much the basics of it. And then whatever you lay off, that's the part that you work on. My question to you guys is if it's simple, Shouldn't we be able to coach everything you need to know then within one year of coaching a bunch of kids? But that comes down, wouldn't you think that it's meant to be simple, there might be a lot more difficulty in the head and how you approach it, your coaching, yep. but you've got to break it down and break, make it simple. Yeah. So you've got to have, it goes back to what you said about having a goal, it might take three years to achieve your goal, but you can't sit there and pump three years of education in one year, it won't work. Exactly. And this is about us understanding learners. Because learning is something that isn't standard. You're going to have different players who are going to learn at different rates, they're going to learn different ways, and all that's going to affect the speed at which you can develop them individually and develop the team. My personal point, the game is not simple. Let's name some of the things that are involved now what we have to coach. Okay? All these people, AFL blokes, who bag our sport, say that we just run into each other, we're blockheads, we're this, that, whatever else, they miss all the little bits. I watch a game and you see the subtleties of a three-man tackle and how they control it. You look at a bloke who finds his front and you see the effort of the technique that goes into it for him to win that. You see the way that a centre blocks out for a winger so he can take an overhead grab. <coughs> you look at the technique and the way they're grabbing out, which is AFL based, they're copying techniques off that. You look at what we do with our um, last half of kick options. All right? It used to be cross field for a winger, sweet, they learn how to defend that. Now it's cross field for a second row. Now it's the uh, Maloney, look to kick, run on last tackle because you've got a shape outside, all you've done is drop their winger back and you beat them with space. Tell me that's simple. You've got that many options, you've got less than a second to make a decision, and they can execute that, and regularly execute it. But I reckon you're right. If we make the main principles of it simple, then we don't get lost. And everything after that, we can just extend upon it, and it's the thing that keeps our game exciting when we coach it. Because we know we've got to teach them that they've got to score more points in the opposition. Right, standard, that's how you win. But how are we going to teach them to score the points? Well, that's enough for you to coach the same individual for 25 years. Because there's that many different ways you could score a try. And if you went through it and you rehearse it, it does a good job. You move on to the next, you move on to the next. What do we know about teaching? If you don't reinforce it, it doesn't stick. So it gives you the right to go back to it again. And that's something that I see with people when they start out on a coaching journey. They spend a lot of time making exciting thinking about how they can do a new drill and that works for the kids. And I made this mistake as a school teacher because so we get so much time with them. But the years that I didn't see my kids develop were the years that I had a new drill this week and next week I had another new drill and the next week another new drill. But the problem was I never went back to the first drill. So I didn't reinforce anything. When they went out and played, I didn't see what I was trying to get them to do because I hadn't reinforced it. Your trick is reinforce it but then tweak it so it's still slightly fresh enough that you keep them excited, you keep the energy, you keep the focus, deal with the short attention spans and all the other things that these kids have in there. What about this one? Maximise your share of possession by completing sets. And I've written in attack and defence. Because completing a set in defence is what? <coughs> Think of all the stages to that. Your first tackle in defence is what? Kick chase. Who coaches kick chase? Who specifically does drills on kick chase? And this is not defined yet. This is just saying, our game is simple, but how many different levels can you guys hit with it on things that will then send you this year? I've got a new drill that is to do with something that you already know, but it's going to help us be better. Teams who put kick chase take beams off the opposition, force pressure. If it's a good kick, they might recover. Your different types of kick chase now that you can see are the ones where they ball behind them. They talked about the other day with Slater, Phil Gould had the perfect one where they'll shape with his shoulders one way and he knows he's going to kick across his body or he's going to use the bend on the kick just to pull Slater so they get him going one way. You saw the other thing that they did in Newcastle was that they sent the ball to the right and they crossed the ruck back to the left just to get Slater going in that direction. So now when you put the kick over, you've isolated a winger 
all by himself, no footwork to clean up the crumbs. If that bike doesn't catch on the pool, it's either a repeat set or it's a try. So that's how much you can put into just something like the end of tackle kick and then the defender, how do you make sure that you don't get hurt that way? Okay. One point could give you a month's worth of work in terms of your coaching. But we get caught up in, we do what we always do. Okay? You kick off, you do your exit sets, you go down, you do a scrum set, you do a penalty set, you do some good ball set. Okay, that's a good session. Our team knows what they're doing. But how often do you practice the little things? And those little things are what the players need to go to the next level. And maybe it's what your team needs to win a big game. To continually go forward in attack and defence and attempt to win every tackle. So that's a simple. Who does a lot of work on bump and spin, hit and spin? Okay, good. Real important because the thing that has changed is the athleticism and the footwork of the blokes who play at the highest level now. It's gone to another level. So if you're a forward who can just run dead straight, and we know Keith Whitgrave, that there's one tourist crossing, and the challenge for him, and he's such a good player, is that we want him to develop late feet. So then you create drills that are challenging, break here, tough, athletic, get you everything that you can in a game. Your drills then revolve around, I need to teach this kid one thing. That one thing that will be important if he's going to go on in the game. The turnover for it, the more you make it about him, the more it will be about you that your team then will potentially be better because he'll rip through the line and he'll be able to quick play the ball because you've developed this one thing in him. Winning tackles and defence, there's so much in that now. Please tell me you don't hate the wrestling. Who's got a brother? I've got a brother. Ross has got brothers. How do you learn to be tough as a boy? You wrestle. You wrestle your brother. You wrestle your sister. You wrestle your dog. Sometimes your mum, poor mum, it's happened as well. The whole point of it though is that you learn physical manipulation and control. Our game isn't about hurting blokes, but it is about stopping them. And it's about showing dominance. And dominance is that when I go one on one with a bike, I physically win my contest against him. If I'm carrying the ball, my contest is that I get to the ground before you do anything to me, because I'm going to be quick play with But if I'm in defense, I'm physically going to put you in a position that means that I get up before you get to ground. And therefore, my team has got the advantage. The modern game is built on this. The modern game is about athletic specimens, carry the ball strong, but are smart enough to know that when they get into that contact zone, their body instantly reacts to find a way to get to the ground. Okay? You can do that in so many different ways, but the thing that you'll get out of it, teaching them to physically compete, is that they will take that into a game. They will be relentless in that effort, and then you'll know that you've got a team that can be in the game to the 80s minute. Because that's all they train for. Everything you do. It doesn't have to be big shots, it doesn't have to be full on contact, but you've got to put some of it into it so that the team is continually under stress and still having to think in my head, <coughs> I'm not going to have to beat them. Even though it's the last tackle of the game, I'm still going to fight you to the end of it. If you get that mentality, we get what we want. A player who gives everything. Creating defense space, playing direct, and playing lateral. The word shape is one that I want to challenge you with too, because I hear lots of coaches, I go around and they all go, yeah, find shape, shape, shape. It's a great word. I reckon it's simplified the game. It's made it simple the way we want it, simple to explain. And it allows people who are not real thinkers about the game to just react. But the problem with shape is if you just use the word shape, you don't explain what you have to do in shape. That's how you do it. Yeah. You think about a block. A block is a shape. <laughs> Who coaches exactly how the lead runner should run? I'm the lead runner, my service player is here, I should be able to pin your outside shoulder, I should be able to go in and hold eyes at the last moment, then I lead to that foot and go there. Because the moment I've gone to that foot, what do you do? You turn, so I'm now beaten to that shoulder. And I go as far into the line as my ball runner can take me. As soon as my body turns, it gives them a glimpse past my ass to be able to see the tail run. So the decision is that late that no one knows who's getting the ball until it's in their hands. But how many kids do you have running block shake going, okay, I'm running block shake, here we go. <laughs> and now we play the tail, and funny enough, you make the tackle on the tail. And it doesn't work. And then they go to the next grade, and instead of not working, that bike gets whacked. And by you getting whacked, we have a turnover. We don't execute, we don't score points in good ball like we should, 
and it hurts the whole team on a simple shape that they've been doing since they were 12, yet they haven't been taught why. What's my job? To turn him out. If I turn him out and then lead back in, he has a late decision which allows the bike to go around the outside. How simple is that game? It's not that simple. Okay? If you went and explained that to someone who doesn't understand rugby league, they'd be going, what do you mean? So that's the point. Okay? You think about it, you spend every waking moment going through the different ways you can teach it and coach it. But then when you get to your kids or you get to your team, how do you make it simple? Because if you can do that well, they'll have the most success.